All right, we're going to try two examples using the quadratic formula to solve a couple uh, quadratic equations. And so uh, these, you may recognize these from the completing the square uh, videos uh, that we just took care of a couple class meetings ago. Um, so, uh, so you should even remember these solutions and, and find those solutions familiar to us. Um, one is going to be real and another one is going to be complex. And so we'll have one of each. Neither one of them works out real nice and pretty. Now, it is possible that solving a quadratic equation can yield uh, solutions that look manageable. You can have x equals positive 2i and negative 2i. You can have x equals 3 and negative 8. Those are possible solutions that could be fine and dandy. Here, we're going to get some kind of nasty radical funness. And so, uh, so we get to deal with that. Let's, um, let's work through this example first, and then we'll work this example next. So we have negative 4x squared minus 5x plus 3 equals 0. Knowing our formula, x equals the opposite of b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac, all divided by 2 times a. We have to identify which letter uh, or which number is a, which number is b, which number is c, and substitute those into the correct place. So x is equal to the opposite of b, so positive 5, plus or minus the square root of b, negative 5, squared, minus 4 times a, negative 4, times c, 3, all divided by 2 times a. All right? And so once we, once we substitute the numbers into the correct place, in our formula, we can start the process of computation. All right? And so we're going to do a little bit of squaring. We're going to do some multiplying, some adding, some subtracting, some dividing, hopefully. Um, although it looks like with a 5 and a negative 8 that we're going to have in our denominator, we won't have to simplify a fraction, which should make most of us happy. And so with that in mind, let's take care of that radicand. Remember, the radicand is the, um, the discriminant here. It's the, uh, it's the expression under the radical sign. So x is equal to 5 plus or minus the square root of 25 plus, so a negative and a negative, they're going to make a, a positive, 16 times 3 is 48, over a negative 8. All right? Now, we're not supposed to have a negative in the denominator. All right? So a negative fraction here is what we're really going to have x is equal to the opposite of 5 plus or minus the square root of 25 and 48 make 73 all over 8. This is our solution. 73 cannot be simplified any better than it already is. Um, and so we have, the, we have negative 5 plus or minus the square root of 73 divided by 8 for our two solutions, the positive solution and the negative solution. All right, for the second example, uh, let's go ahead and uh, take this. 3x squared minus 8x plus 16 equals 0. We're going to take a equals 3, b equals negative 8, and c equals 16, and we will put them into the correct place in our formula. Now, I'm a fan of making sure that we know the formula by heart. All right, because you're not gonna, I'm not going to give you that formula for your exam. Um, you won't have that formula necessarily on your ACT or your SAT or your state assessment or anything like that. And so, um, so you, you need to know this formula. And there's lots of ways that you can learn it and memorize it and repeat it. There's different tools, different songs that you can sing. I'm not much of a singer. Uh, so let's rewrite the formula. By rewriting it, we will start to commit it to memory. I know it's more work, but if it helps you make progress, then, then who cares, right? Just do the extra work. x equals the opposite of b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac, all divided by 2 times a. So in this case, x is equal to the opposite of negative 8, so positive 8, plus or minus negative 8 squared minus 4 times 3 times 16. Ugh, I might need my calculator for that. 2 times a is our denominator, 2 times 3 in this case. So x is equal to 8 plus or minus the square root of 64 minus uh, 12 times 16 is 192, all over 6. 
Now, 64 minus 192 is going to give us a negative number. So if we remember from the last video that when we have a square root of a negative number, that means we're going to end up with complex solutions here. So this is a real solution. This is a real number. I know it's irrational and it's probably very difficult to locate that on a number line, um, but we could find decimal approximations for this. Uh, here we're going to end up with an imaginary number. All right, so just be aware. It's not a big deal. We can handle it. So x is equal to 8 plus or minus the square root of negative 128 over 6. Ugh, this we need to simplify in more ways than one. Not just take out the negative 1 as i, the imaginary number, but we have uh, 64 times 2 in here. So that means that we actually have, let me get my calculator, x is equal to 8 plus or minus uh, looks like 8i radical 2 over 6. All right. Now that looks a little reasonable. Obviously there's an imaginary component there, uh, but we're not done. Here we do have to simplify a fraction. Right? We've got a common factor. If I pull out um, a 2 from the top and a 2 from the bottom, all right, then those 2's will, will reduce or will cancel each other out. They will multiply out as a factor of 1. So if I factor out a 2 over 2, that means that x is equal to 4 plus or minus 4i radical 2 over 3. This is our solution. It's both of our solutions, right? We have 4 plus 4i radical 2 over 3 and 4 minus 4i radical 2 divided by 3. This is how you use the quadratic formula to solve uh, quadratic equations, all right? What's nifty about this method versus other methods is this will work every single time. Whereas when you're factoring, you need to have, you know, a very special situation where you can find factors of A times C that add up to B. When you're completing the square, uh, you can pretty much do that with any situation. Also, it may get a little cumbersome when you have an A value that's not equal to 1, and so that can kind of complicate things. Uh, but overall, the quadratic formula, um, uh, using that to solve a quadratic equation, is probably going to be your best bet in all situations. All right, It may take some work, um, but it's all work that we can handle. So uh, enjoy using the quadratic formula to solve quadratic equations.